in this section of chapter 5, I would like to discuss about enthalpy and calorimetry. Enthalpy or energy content is given by the sum of internal energy plus pressure times volume. We can better understand enthalpy when we get uh, the change in enthalpy. So from calculus, you know that change in enthalpy will be given by change in energy, internal energy plus P times delta V when the pressure is constant. And which is the case in most experiments, which we do under one atmospheric pressure. So in most experiments, we can write down delta H as delta E plus P delta V. Now, if delta H is increased, that means enthalpy is increased, means delta E or internal energy is also increased. And if that is the case, work could be done by the gas. So P de delta V would be given, would represent work done by the gas to the surroundings. So work done by the gas to the surroundings. Now in this slide, we're showing you when work is done by the gas, then W would be given by P times delta V. So now we're going to write down from here, P delta V equals to minus W. I mean, that's what you're seeing in this expression. First, we wrote down delta E plus P delta V, and then delta E, we already know, that's given by heat gained by the system plus work done on the system. So Q plus W. And minus W is coming from P delta V, which is work done by the gas. So W minus W cancel out. That means change in enthalpy is nothing but heat that's added to the system. So keep this in mind. When a process is endothermic, delta H is positive. When process is exothermic, delta H is negative. Enthalpy change in a chemical reaction is often called heat of reaction, which means that heat could be given off or absorbed in a chemical reaction. And some of the properties that I have written down at the bottom, make sure you go over and understand that. Enthalpy is an extensive property. That means enthalpy of a reaction for one mole of a reactant would not be same as enthalpy of the reaction for two moles of the same reactant is going to be double. And that's extensive property. And the other thing is, if you switch a reaction, enthalpy value is going to be uh, equal and opposite in sign. And also the change in enthalpy depends only on the state of products and reactants. So with this in mind, let's go over problem number 43. I'll try to fit in 43A and B in this space. Now, 43, they have given you a reaction. Which, so let me write down the reaction first. 2Mg plus O2. I'm ignoring the state of the matter or solid gas, all those things, because it's not needed for this problem. 2 MgO and delta H is given by minus 1204, minus 1204 kilojoule. Then this is minus, it's an exothermic reaction. So the part A is asking for, is it exothermic or endothermic? Answer is it is exothermic because heat is given off and delta H is minus. So let's now work on part B. So part A, exothermic. And part B, I'll show you the setup. Question is, calculate the amount of heat transferred. So the question is asking about the heat quantity of heat being transferred. When 3.55 gram of magnesium, 3.55 gram of magnesium 
reacts at constant pressure. So now we'll show you one such calculation. All the calculations like these are very similar. So let me sh do this. 3.55 gram, 3.55 gram magnesium. Now I need to go to heat from starting from here. I need to go to heat. So I, how are they correlated? Two moles of magnesium would generate or give off 1204 kilojoule of heat energy and that's why there's minus. So in other words, in order to use that relationship, these moles and heat quantity, so I've written down moles on the top of the chemical reaction. I need to first convert gram of magnesium to mole of magnesium. So let's do that. Gram of magnesium, on the top you'd have a mole magnesium. Remember gram mole relationship, look at periodic table for the masses. So you need to look at the mass of magnesium, which is 24.3 gram. So 24.3 gram of magnesium. And we can now cancel out magnesium, gram of magnesium. That gives me most, most of magnesium. In my next step, I must relate two moles of magnesium with the heat because that's what you need to get to because their final answer is asking for heat, quantity of heat. So I think since I can fit everything in there, let me write down my next step. In next line times two moles of magnesium, two mole mg, that gives that gives off 1204 kilojoule of heat energy and minus means is given off okay now i guess get the quantity of heat equals to minus 87.9 kilojoule and remember if you want to cancel out I want to show you this should be all in mole mole of magnesium would cancel out only thing left would be kilojoule so unit checks out so this should be the right answer to this problem now make sure you redo these problems without seeing how I, I have done it first time maybe you can follow how this was done. These are all dimensional analysis problems. So it would be a good idea to try yourself. Now I'm going to show you how to do number 43 C and D. So again I need to write down the reaction again because it's on this on the other slide. So let's write down 2 mg plus O2 2 MgO and delta H is minus 12 of 4 minus 12 or 4 kilojoule okay and now part C Part C is asking for how many grams, so here we need to find out the gram. How many grams of magnesium oxide? So let's have a question mark so that we know what we're looking for, MgO. So how many grams of MgO are produced during the enthalpy change of minus 234 kilojoule? So enthalpy change they gave is minus 234 kilojoule. So We'll start with what is given. So minus 234 kilojoule. And when this much of energy is given off, we need to find out how much MgO uh, are produced in the reaction. So basically we start with kilojoule and 
go to MGO and find out the gram of MGO. Let me show you how to do that. Now, first step would be, I need to go to mole. So starting with kilojoule, so I have kilojoule, and I know from the reaction, together with the delta H value, 1204 kilojoule. Remember, this 1204 kilojoule is, is, is given off in this reaction when two moles of Mg reacts with one mole of oxygen, giving two moles of MgO. So these numbers are tied together. So let me write down two, one of oxygen, two of MgO, and delta H value. They're all tied together. So that relationship has to be maintained. So when I write down 1204 kilojoule, and since I need to get to MgO, I can see the relationship. Two of MgO is related to 1204 kilojoule of energy. So I'm going to write down from the reaction, two mole MgO. Next step, you can cancel out what we don't need, kilojoule, kilojoule would cancel out. Now I have MgO there. So let's now go from mole of MgO to gram of MgO. Again, mole gram periodic table. So let me write down here mole MgO has to be at the bottom because I need to cancel out mole of MgO on the top and gram of MgO. That's our final answer that you are supposed to get. So one mole of MgO would be molar mass would be on the top. So again, MgP, mole gram periodic table. Find out in your periodic table and add up the masses of Mg and O and add them up. So Mg, you already know it's 24.3 and oxygen is about 16. So add them up and that number goes to the top and that would give you the final answer in grams because others are all going to cancel out. So mole of MgO cancel out with mole of MgO. So we have only gram of MgO left. So I'm going to write down here as parenthesis, gram MgO. Make sure you finish up this and write down your answer. And this would be a very good practice for you. Let's do now part D. In part D, number 43 part D, 5.43 part D, they're saying that how many kilojoules of heat are absorbed when 40.3 gram of MgO is decomposed into MgNO2. The top reaction, what we started with, for, and we solve A, B, and C are for formation of MgO. Now this question is asking about decomposition, which is the reverse reaction that they're referring to. So let's write down the reaction first. Two MgO that breaks down or into two Mg plus O2 and delta H is going to be the same quantity, but opposite sign. It was minus, now this time it's going to be plus. One, two, zero, four kilojoule. Make sure you understand why it's positive. Because we switch the reaction. That means the product became reactant and reactant became product. So that's why since enthalpies, Hs are a state function since reactant became product, product became reactant. So it's when you subtract final to the initial, the sign is going to change and negative becomes positive now. Or exothermic is now endothermic. Okay, now with this information, let's see whether we can do this problem. How many kilojoule of heat are absorbed? So question is asking for kilojoule. So let's write a question mark here. How many kilojoule of heat are absorbed and 40.3 gram of MgO. So they're talking about 40.3 gram, 40.3 gram MgO. It's a good idea to write down so that you can keep track of the units. So we need to get to heat from MgO. 
again we go from gram to mole so let's draw a line here so that you don't get confused gram of MgO per mole of MgO now that gram again mole gram that comes from periodic table so make sure get this value by adding masses of mg and o and that goes to the bottom and that gives you let's show you by cancellation of units mgo mg would cancel out gram of, if i stop here i'm going to get mole of mgo now from mole of mgo i can get to the heat because they're linked together times mole of MgO mole MgO and how many moles I can see from the reactions two moles of MgO and that gives that absorbs 1204 kilojoule of heat so that's going to be our setup and again you can double check cancel by canceling the unit mole of mg or mole of mg would cancel out so my final unit that's left is in is kilojoule and that gives you the answer so your answer should be here in kilojoule make sure uh, do this calculation and I got 602 kilojoule so make sure you try it independently Calorimetry allows us to determine how much heat is given off or absorbed in a chemical reaction. Basically, reaction is done in this container, and then as the reaction happens, if it is a solution of water, water would be surroundings. So chemical, if say for example, heat is given off, then water is going to absorb the heat and its temperature go up. From the temperature difference, change in temperature, and multiplying it by mass and specific heat, you get how much heat was given off in a chemical reaction. And we'll discuss this in next two slides. Here we are first going to define heat capacity and specific heat. Amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree centigrade or one Kelvin is called heat capacity. On the other hand, specific heat is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance. So one involves specific heat deals with one gram of substance, whereas heat capacity is for any sample. So basically if heat capacity is given by say, let's write down cap capacity is given by mass times specific heat. So mass times specific heat gives you heat capacity. On the other hand, specific heat is just S value. In most cases, we're going to use this expression mass times specific heat times temperature difference. In this table, we're looking at specific heats of different substances. And some of the most common ones are given, like water is 4.18 joule per Kelvin per gram. I just mentioned about this expression where quantity of heat heat is given by mass times specific heat times temperature difference. Now specific heat of different solutions are well known like water value is 4.184 and most reactions that we carry out in aqueous solution we can just use this value 4.184 joule per gram per degree Kelvin or per degree centigrade is the same thing. And this is temperature difference. So that could be the temperature difference between initial and final state. So it, when it's an exothermic reaction, de delta T or final temperature go up. In case of endo endothermic reaction, temperature go down. Now bomb calorimeter, this tells you different design of different calorimeters. That's how scientists study how much heat is given off or absorbed in a chemical reaction. So in the picture you're seeing bomb calorimeter where the sample is in this small container. And when heat is given off the surrounding water 
is going to absorb that heat and its temperature go up. So basic idea is the same. Here we're going to define a standard enthalpy of formation and then we're going to do a problem number 73 which would apply uh, enthalpy of formation values in, in a chemi for a chemical reaction. So enthalpy of formation is defined as the enthalpy change or heat change involved in forming one mole of a compound from its constituent elements under standard states. For example, if I want to write down uh, a reaction for SO3, so I must have one mole of SO3 gas, because I'm going by the definition, forming one mole of a compound, so one mole of SO3 from its constituent elements. Constituent elements are sulfur and oxygen. So it's going to be sulfur plus, it's not just O, because it say that constituent elements under standard states at 25 degrees centigrade, oxygen would not remain as O, it would remain as O2. So, and it's a gas phase. Sulfur would be a solid. So now I need to balance it so that I get three oxygen on the right hand side. So. I have one sulfur, so sulfur that remains intact, so it'd be 3 over 2 O2. So this is the reaction. If you calculate heat of reaction for this particular reaction, then heat of reaction, since it's a standard state, that superscript 0 stands for standard state, and that's equals to heat of formation, delta H F0. So this is how heat of formation uh, is defined by this kind of reactions and different scientists have done this kind of reactions and they have tabulated all these results in Appendix C on page 1059 Brown and LeMay 12th edition. Now let's go over number 73 5.73 basically we are going to use heat of formation data and we're going to apply product values minus the reactant values. The reaction that they have given is the following. 2SO2 gas, 2SO2. Here we need to write down the state of the matter because the values are different. Okay, oxygen gas, and that gives you 2SO3 gas. Okay, so we need to find out what is the heat of reaction for this? And I'm doing only 73A. They're all similar problems because you get the values from back of the book and basically get product values minus the reactant values. So standard enthalpy change that of the reaction. So that they're looking for delta H of this reaction since it's a standard, the superscript zero. A standard means 25 degrees centigrade and one atmospheric pressure. Of course, heat of formation values that you're going to get from Appendix C are all standard values. Okay, now with this in mind, let's write down delta H0 reaction equals to, now I have two moles of SO3. The heat of formation values the back of the book are only for one mole. So that's why we need to multiply by two. So two times delta HF zero, heat of formation values for SO3 gas, SO3 gas minus the reactant values. Two times heat of formation values, standard heat of formation values for SO2 gas. SO2 gas minus heat of formation value for O2 gas. Now you can get all these values from back of the book. And so let me write down these values and you can double check and make sure you apply the same way, same formula, products minus reactants times the number of moles. And then that will give you heat of reaction minus 395.2 to 
2, that's kilojoule. It was kilojoule per mole. Since we are multiplied by 2 mole, it becomes it becomes kilojoule only. And let's use a line here not to get confused. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color because numbers are getting too close to each other. Minus 2 times, minus 2 times delta HF for SO2. And that value is minus 296.9. Minus 296.9 kilojoule. And then we need to subtract heat of formation for oxygen, which is zero. So for pure elements under standard state, heat of formation is zero. This is because the way we define heat of formations. So this answer, by doing all this math, make sure you get your answer and that would be in kilojoule.